In this video, we're gonna do something a bit different. It seems like every other vehicle we drive today has some type of hybridization to it. And Toyota was one of the first. So I wanted to talk you through some of the technical reasons why they've become so popular and so successful at this formula and then take the car for a drive and walk through some of the things that are great about it and not so great. Now to better understand the Toyota hybrid and now plug-in hybrid strategy and why it's relevant and so popular today, you have to do a brief history lesson. You go back about 25 years and you see Honda and Toyota coming up with their own versions of how to electrify cars. Honda went the ultra innovative approach. They used the electric motor to augment a small three cylinder engine with the Honda Insight. But it wasn't just about that part. They were looking at weight reduction. So they took a lot of their learnings from NSX and even had some, some of the same body engineers working on the aluminum body for the Insight and then working on aerodynamics. Really, again, breaking, the, breaking new ground on all these different solutions to make a car more fuel efficient, yet lightweight and engaging to drive. The problem with the Honda setup was it wasn't designed to be scaled out across hundreds of thousands of vehicles. And that was a big mistake going forward as they tried to put it into Civics and Accords. It just was not the right setup to, to make uh, so many vehicles and heavier weight cars. Toyota took a different approach. They took a far more conservative, less complicated approach. They weren't dealing with all aluminum body structures. They built a, a motor system that could be used in a small car and then scaled up to sedans and then later on SUVs and CUVs and now trucks without having to completely throw out the design and all the development they did over decades. So this iterative approach of adding an additional motor generator unit to drive the wheels or just purely charge the battery pack, you know, it's flexible enough to apply across multiple applications. And that's why you see it in every single one of their cars. And it's this commitment to not constantly changing and constantly just experimenting that they built out one of the best hybrid systems. And you could argue, of course, is it the, the most powerful? Is it the most fuel efficient design they could possibly do? No, it was a design meant to go into millions of vehicles. A good example is their trucks, their new hybrid max. And the people ask this all the time, like why would they put a nickel metal hydride pack, an old design, into a truck versus a lithium ion or a prismatic cell or you know whatever you whatever battery tech the newer stuff you want to talk about they haven't done that when you look at the battery pack in the hybrid max it goes under the rear seat it, i mean and it's fan cooled so if you have a problem with it you're not taking a forklift and having to have specialty tools and dropping this massive multi-thousand pound pack down out of a truck or a car to service it most shops could do this and because Toyota's supply chain is so strong with these types of technologies, you're gonna get a battery pack in 10 years without spending $20,000 to replace it. Like some of the newer lithium ion packs are. It's this plan for the future and it's the plan to make normal cars more reliable and easier to service. Now, they are definitely not perfect. They have, they have problems and you can see where they've had to cut costs in other places. When you look at some of the more upper end German cars, there's more aluminum. There might be more body adhesives and other brands. Some cars might be quieter, more refined. But again, it's about finding that balance between innovation and technology. And this is the big thing that I saw, you know, we're talking about this at the Chicago Auto Show this year. I did an interview with Moto Man, and we were talking about the, the cars being so expensive and trucks being so expensive. And Toyota has some really expensive products too. They're, they're guilty of that. But the auto show was a big push towards innovation. Because we have technology, we have innovated. And that's not how things work. Innovation does not mean technology for technology's sake. Innovation is pushing things forward. And I think a lot of these brands confuse that. They're spending so much money to put technology in that's not going to be relevant in five or 10 years for the sake of trying to market that product now. And by marketing all this technology as innovation, and it winds up not having the staying power, or not lasting or not working long-term, you're making a much more disposable product that cannot be fixed or supported. So when you wanna boil it all down, how do you get millions of cars on the road that people can keep on the road? That is, again, 
not rewriting or reinventing the wheel on every single aspect of a car and namely being very conservative with technology application which brings us back to this thing the prius prime despite it not having unbelievable range you can get 40 miles on paper with ev range in the cold i'm getting 32. there's the efficiency hit there however the big difference here is when you get down to one mile ev range you don't care you don't know because your gasoline engine is going to kick in and it's going to turn into a hybrid. When I go on a road trip, I can have a full battery. Guess what? After 35 miles, I'm going to drive back on 400 miles of gasoline and then I'm going to fill it up in, in five minutes and get back on the road. I don't have to worry about the, the technology part, uh, the technology for technology's sake, interfering with the actual usability of the product. It works like we've always expected a modern vehicle to work. That is until technology becomes an innovation in the battery space. When we no longer have to have this discussion about trade-offs of charging or am I going to make it? These hybrids do that already. They do that today and that's why they're popular. And they do it at a price point and a usability and reliability point that normal families can hope to afford without any gimmicks. And that's why this has been so successful. I'm going to take this for a drive and I'm going to walk through the pros and cons of the system and the way that it works to drive and why you might consider it or why you wouldn't. So the hybrid and plug-in hybrid formula, it's no doubt that people are adopting these more and more for the benefits of the fuel efficiency. When fuel prices are high, you instantly regret and you wish you had one. And now that the plugins have become more popularized, one of the reasons is you can get full EV range for a normal commute. And all the statistics say, you know, most people don't drive more than like 20 or 30 miles a day. So if you're looking at a vehicle like this, when the sweet spot about 40 miles of EV range, you could potentially never use the gasoline motor, but you could. The obvious things that it does, besides fuel efficiency, if you don't even care about that, is it elevates the refinement of most of these plug-in vehicles or hybrid vehicles because they're quieter. You don't have the rattly-ass four-cylinder running all the time, and it, namely creeping into the house at night or, or rolling around, you don't have the, the, the sound of a four-cylinder or three-cylinder, so it, it can feel more like a luxury car. And the fact that most of these vehicles are a lot quieter than they used to be, which many people don't think about um every every year a new car comes out one of the first things they're trying to do is make them more refined more quiet and you add an ev drivetrain or at least a hybrid drivetrain and it makes a huge difference so you have the fuel economy you have lower emissions sometimes and of course you have the ev part where you can just drive it on pure electric so at least in the Toyota sense, that's what we're talking about here. That's what I'm trying to make the point is their hybrid system has become so seamless between gasoline and electric. Their eCVT is, it essentially doesn't sound like a horrible belt driven CVT. It feels more like a regular transmission and that transition between gas and electric is almost unnoticeable when you command power it gets the gasoline motor spun up to high RPM and you have the torque fill from the electric motors and it makes it feel a lot faster than what this thing specs out to be. You essentially have an eco four cylinder propelled by the EV drivetrain part of this and it feels really fast. And you're always gonna have that torque part that it's delivering and that to me is the best part about these systems. Now, the negative parts about the plug-in hybrids and the hybrids is they're not designed for performance. Even though it improves the performance, there is something uh, to be said about the fact that these are very disconnected feeling cars. When you look at the Prius Prime, for example, when you look at the outside of this thing, you're like, you know, it looks like it would be really fun to drive. But, you know, the hybrid drivetrain has that just... I mean, there's the immediacy from the electric motors, but again, it's all layered in software and 
all layered through the programming of all these systems so it is a very dead feeling car it is it can be quick but it doesn't particularly handle well and this is the thing with most toyota's modern toyota hybrids is this is one thing they're not putting a ton of design in and the prius prime is front wheel drive only so when you get the torque to come in it's spinning the front tires it's front wheel drive problems if you get the e all wheel drive which is all the hybrids are going to now there's no mechanical system in the back it always feels very electronic controlled and that's the one thing that i will say is if you do if you favor the driving experience and you're not just turning off your brain when you're driving um they're not the most engaging cars to drive and that's something that the toyota hybrid systems have always struggled with um and I think it's going to become more and more an issue as more cars and more vehicles and more products go to plug-in hybrids and hybrids or EVs even, that they're going to have to find a way to bring back a little bit of the driving connection without it feeling so synthetic. But for the most people that are driving this, if you're buying it as a family car, for example, one of the biggest benefits is, is it just blends in the background and works. Uh, from brake by wire feeling natural, the steering is you know direct but it's you know it's a little dead but it still feels like something's going on there a little bit they have all these systems tuned very well to meet the requirements of the common person and that's where older vehicles that were doing this felt uh like experiments they no longer feel like experiments and i think when you get in here as a normal ve person that's buying that family vehicle you're going to appreciate how you don't think about it and that goes to, that says a lot to their engineering that they've really sorted this out and figured it out for mainstream products and I hope that you get a chance to drive one of these modern interpretations or modern iterations of the Toyota hybrid systems namely in the Lexus where it's just got a little bit more juice going to it. Uh, it they are very very good to drive and it makes sense why they're selling a gajillion of them but we're going to cover more of this stuff in the future thanks for watching I'll see you next video